Well, it's wonderful to be in this messy series at the moment, Holy Spirit. And really, we are seeing a bit of a move of God here on the Isle of Man. We've seen baptisms week after week. We have seen, even seen radical conversions. You know, I remember last Sunday in one of our congregations, the Holy Spirit moved in power. People were just overcome by the Spirit. And, you know, in some churches, they want to try to hide the work of the Holy Spirit behind closed doors. It might put people off. But we believe we need the encounter of the Holy Spirit in power. And, and even in one of our congregations last Sunday night, as it was a wild night and God is moving in power, one of our dearly loved brothers, who up until that moment in time would have called himself an atheist, well, he discovered uh, what really Paul said about the Corinth church when an unbelievers in your midst and everyone's prophesying. They'll bow down and worship and they'll say, truly God is among you. And he was radically converted this week, uh, all because of a move of the Holy Spirit. And today I'm going to talk about supernatural love. You know, what is love? Well, every other chart song tries to give you the answer for what love is, or it poses the question, what is love? You know, for some people, love is a feeling. It's a, it's a quiver in my liver. Um, it's a, a giddiness in my stomach. For other people, love is uncontrollable. Oh, my head's spinning. I, I fell into love. I just couldn't help myself. For other people, love is conditional. I love you if you love me. You know, uh, we haven't seen many uh, soccer games uh, recently from in the stands, although we can see them now on TV. But what is the Bible verse you'll see at every football match? What's that Bible verse? You'll see the big banner, John 3, 16. God so loved the world. Well, what about when you go to a wedding? What is the most common Bible passage that you'll have read at a wedding. Do you know what it is? Yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And let me just read a little snippet from it, verses 4 through to 7, about what love really is. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. You see, true love isn't a feeling. True love is action. And these actions that are described in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 aren't natural <laughs> actions. It's not how we naturally respond. They are supernatural actions. And here Paul says in Romans 5 and 5 that God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, this type of love, this type of radical love originates with God. It comes through our lives by the Holy Spirit living in us and living through us. And today I want to look at three aspects of this supernatural love that the Holy Spirit gives us. Number one, it's a love that is others focused. You know, we live in the age of self, not others. In fact, in 2002, a word was first recorded uh, on the internet that really captures what the current age is all about. It captures our culture. And do you know what that word is? That word is selfie. Okay, selfie. Uh, I mean, think of this. I often share this story. You go to a wedding. You're part of the, the uh, lar larger wedding party. The photographer takes the photograph. A few weeks later, there it is on Facebook. Everybody in the wedding, where does your eye go? Is it going to the bride and groom? No, it doesn't go to the bride and groom. It goes to me, me, myself, and I, that unholy trinity. You see, we live in an age where it's selfie, it's self-focused rather than other-focused. But supernatural love, this love that is poured into our heart, is all about others, not self. And in 1 Corinthians here, Paul says, it does not dishonor others, this love. It is not self-seeking. I've been out in Eastern Europe many times. Just before lockdown, I was in Poland and I can't wait to get back to see my friends there in South Warsaw. And in Poland, they have these wonderful dolls. But 
Actually, they're no ordinary doll, they're a doll within a doll, within a doll, within a doll, within a doll. <laughs> and actually, they for me are a prophetic picture of how God sees your life and my life. Because from God's perspective, when God sees you, he doesn't just see you, he doesn't see self alone, he sees others. He sees others. There are others that he's called us to reach out to. The earliest hymn in the New Testament for Christians to sing is a hymn which is called the Carmen Christi, the hymn to Christ. And it's found in Philippians chapter 2. And in, and in the preamble to that, the hymn starts off with who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God as something to be grasped, etc. It talks about Jesus going to the cross. But in the preamble in verse 4 it says, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And that's Jesus. He looked for others. He goes to the cross, not because of anything he has done, but because of others. Because of us. The Bible actually says that we were enemies of God. Foreigners, strangers to his household. And Jesus is thinking about others. You know, in that final discourse in those last few days before Good Friday, we see the supernatural love of Jesus. Judas the Bible says that Satan has already entered him and Judas is going to betray him. Peter is going to deny him. All the disciples will abandon him. But in John 13 we read, So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. That is an amazing example of love. We live in a world when people are into titles and position. No, Jesus is into towels, serving others, even washing the feet of Judas, whom he knew would betray him. Jesus walks across the cosmos. He comes and he lays down his life for enemies of God, for sinners all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This is a supernatural love. And it's a love that God wants to shine through our lives. The Spirit, when He comes within us, He changes our focus from self to others. Serving others, loving others, blessing others, sharing the message of salvation to others. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives. And I pray for us in a few minutes time that he will overwhelm us and transform us with this supernatural love. Okay, number two, a second aspect of this supernatural love is a love that doesn't keep score. A love that doesn't keep score. I heard the story about two guys working very hard at the office all day and unfortunately at the end of the day rather than going home one guy says to the other guy let's go to the pub and one drink goes into two drinks three drinks and they are there sadly all night last orders bell rings time for them to go home when one of the guys turns to the other guy and says oh my goodness when I get home my wife is going to be historical the other guy looks at him and says what do you mean Historical. Don't you mean hysterical? He says, no, 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 no. Historical. She's going to tell me every wrong thing I've ever done in my life. Well, let me tell you, supernatural love isn't historical. In fact, here Paul says, love is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Picture the scene on that Good Friday, on that eve before Good Friday, Jesus there, he has never sinned, and yet he's in a kangaroo court. He's been mocked and flogged and whipped and stripped and flayed and, and beaten. What a terrible scene. Even the hair plucked from his face. And then he goes to that hill outside of Jerusalem, Calvary, and he's nailed to a cross for you and for me. And what are his words? Luke 23, 34. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. 
He's hanging on a cross. My goodness. And what is his response? Not to call down angels or even fire from heaven. No, he calls for grace and forgiveness to those who had mistreated him. That's the supernatural love of the Spirit of Christ. You know, you and I often, we want mercy for ourselves and justice for others. But love focuses on forgiveness. Now, if you're human, if you have a pulse, at some time in your life, you will, life, you will have been hurt. You will have been treated unfairly, unjustly. You'll either be hurt by people deliberately, unfortunately, or even accidentally, and the truth is, hurt people hurt people are, are broken. This is like if you had a little splinter or scalp in your hand. If somebody comes to shake your hand, you react. And, and when we have that hurt and that pain, unfortunately, even when people try to love on us, our brokenness comes through. But when we experience the Holy Spirit, this supernatural love doesn't any longer keep score. It forgives. John says in 1 John 4 and 20, If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother. He's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. You see, the evidence of the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit in our lives is that we do not keep record of wrongs, that we are forgiving. And, and that isn't something which comes naturally. That's something only God can do in us. You know, I first came to the Isle of Man in 1998 to lead what was a, had been a little church plant in Port St. Mary. Then it was called Port St. Mary Baptist Church. And one of the founding elders of the church was a, is a very godly man called Robin Oak. Robin had been the chief constable of police on the Isle of Man and served alongside me as an elder there in Port St. Mary. Uh, Robin had, had a son in England as well. He was also in the police force in Manchester. But in 2003, his son was carrying out a raid on an Al-Qaeda cell in the greater Manchester area and sadly during that raid Steve Oak, Stephen Oak was murdered. He was stabbed. He lost his life. It was a terrible, a terrible, terrible time. The terrorists were making uh, ricin and I remember going to the press conference with Robin and sitting beside him as you had BBC and Sky and all sorts of uh, news reporters there and asking for the facts of the case. And then one of the reporters asked this question. Mr. Oak, how do you feel towards the man who killed your son? And without taking a second breath, Robin Oak looked at the reporter and said, I forgive him. I nearly fell off my seat. Robin said, I forgive him. And Robin has since written the book, Father, Forgive the Forgotten F word. But that's the supernatural work that the Spirit of Christ does in our lives. That's He, Christ comes into our lives and as, and as Christ from the cross said to those who had caused so much pain to Him, forgive them, the Spirit enables us to say to those who have hurt us and caused us so much pain, I forgive Him. I forgive Him. Her. That isn't natural. That is the supernatural love of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's interesting how the writer of Hebrews uh, records God's actions towards those of us, all of us who have sinned. He says in Hebrews 8 and 12, And I will forgive their wickedness, and I will remember their sins no more. You know, God is God. God cannot forget. <laughs> However, God chooses not to remember our sins. Hmm. He doesn't minimize sin. Jesus is going to have to die on the cross and shed his blood for our sins. But God's choice in dealing with us is not to get historical, not to rehearse things over and over again, but to forgive. You know, when you and I are hurt, we're either going to get bitter or better. Unforgiveness is like pouring out a, pup, a cup of poison, drinking it yourself and expecting the person who has hurt you to die. You're only killing yourself. You're only locking yourself in a, in a prison. 
That's why we need to embrace the Holy Spirit. We need to embrace this supernatural love. Allow God to pour his love into our hearts because it will bring freedom for you and freedom for others as well. And it will glorify God. Well, let me just conclude today with one other aspect of the supernatural love. It's a love that believes the best. A love that believes the best. You know, we live in this cancel culture. On the Isle of Man, we talk about Manx crabs. You know, you put the crabs in the bucket and as one crab tries to uh, climb up out of the bucket, you can be sure all the other crabs will pull it down. I don't think it's just simply uh, uh, peculiar to the Isle of Man. Other countries will call it tall poppy syndrome, yeah. And so people love to gossip, people love to slander, people love to pull others down. You have anti-social media out there, but supernatural love believes the best about others. Supernatural love stands shoulder to shoulder rather than believing the worst. Here's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, uh, 13 verse 7. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes. You know, no one is perfect. We've all sinned. But everyone is a 10 out of 10 somewhere in their lives. They're a 10 out of 10 in some aspect of their being. And love sees the gold, not the dirt. I love the parable of the prodigal in Luke 15. What a son. A son who says to his dad, I want you dead. Well, that's what you're doing when you say, give me a man inheritance while you're still alive. He brings shame on the family. He's involved in loose and moral living. He's backslidden. He's turned his back on Judaism. He's eating um, pigs, well, living with the pigs. Not what you'd expect a kosher lad to do. And yet we lead in Luke 15 and 20. So he returned to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming, filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him and kissed him. Do you notice what the father doesn't do? The father doesn't say, are you really sorry? Or you can be a servant. Or okay, you're on a trial period now. We'll see how it goes. I've heard all the stories about you. No, love believes the best. You're my son. You're home. You've changed. Believe the best about others. Think of the story of Peter on the night when Jesus is betrayed. Peter denies him three times before the cock crows. And in the story of restoration in John 21, we read, Jesus said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Then Jesus said, feed my sheep. On that first Easter Sunday, when the angel is at the tomb and, and people there are at the tomb, you know, looking for Jesus. You know what the angel says to send this message? Tell the disciples and Peter. Isn't that a wonderful little phrase? Tell the disciples and Peter. You see, love restores. Peter's relationship with the Lord is going to be restored. There's this supernatural love restores that relationship Love believes the best. And then Peter has this ministry of global proportion. Our world is full of cynics and critics and, uh, and judges and skeptics. But supernatural love believes the best about others. The Holy Spirit um, fills us and gives us grace healed eyes as we see other people. Now, how can we have this supernatural love? Well, I read it earlier. John says, we love. How can we love this way? Well, we love because he first loved us. We can't summon up this type of love. We can't create it in our own strength. We are transformed by the supernatural love of God as the Holy Spirit pours that love into our hearts. Let me ask a question as we near our conclusion today. Have you had God's love poured into your heart? I'm not saying have you been to church. I'm not saying do you watch the live streams or you read your Bible. No, have you had God's love poured into your heart? Remember that football match verse you'll see in all the stadia and big banners, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish 
but we'd have everlasting life. You see, to experience the love of God, there's something we all need to do. We need to believe, put our faith in what Jesus has done for us in the cross. Many people know the verse, but they haven't yet believed. And the cross has no impact until you believe. Have you personally believed? Have you turned from a life which is self-focused, scorekeeping, and believing the worst, to a life that is other-focused, that is forgiving, that believes the best? As you hear this message today, I'm trusting that the Holy Spirit will put a light bulb moment in your life where suddenly, if you haven't yet believed that Now your desire will be to believe and be transformed by the Spirit of God. How do you do that? Well, we confess our sin. We've all sinned in word and thought and deed. We say sorry to the Lord for our sin. We put our faith in what Jesus has done for us on the cross, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and He raised again on the third day. And then we receive the forgiveness of God the gift of the Holy Spirit and of eternal life. And as every week as I do, I want to give an opportunity if you want to respond or you're a prodigal coming home and and to start that journey with Jesus. We do have starter packs which have Bibles and CDs and and, uh, devotional manuals as well which really help you. And and you can get one of those free of charge by texting 493-500 or infoandlivinghope.im. But if you sense now that God is speaking to you and You need to believe that you want to transform life. Let me pray for you now and echo this prayer in your heart today. Father, I pray now for those who suddenly have been awakened by your spirit that they want a new life, that this whole life is not pleasing to you. And as they confess their sin, as they turn from their sin and they put their faith in Christ crucified and risen, I thank you now that you will forgive them. May they experience your forgiveness. Receive that gift of forgiveness. Would you cleanse them now? Would you fill them with your Holy Spirit, that supernatural love? Fill them with your peace. And I thank you for the free gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you've echoed that prayer in your heart, you can even comment on the live stream or send us a message. We'd love to connect you. It's it's great to have people join us to view, but the body of Christ gets connected. You can't have a hand separated. A hand needs to join the body. And then I want to pray for the entire church family today that we would experience this supernatural love. That's what Paul says in Ephesians 3 and 19. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand that you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. And why don't you just position yourselves, hands open before the Lord, ready and willing for Him to pour His Spirit into your life. No longer being selfish, but selfie. No longer being unforgiving. No longer being critical that you would encounter the supernatural love of God. Even you might want to stand up where you are as I pray for you. Holy Spirit, would you come into our lives afresh? Father, would you pour the Spirit afresh into our lives? We want to exhibit that supernatural love. Would you come now? And give us a love for others that we wouldn't be just focused on our own interests, but on others. We want to share the good news with others. We want to serve others. We want to bless others. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Yes, and uh, Lord, we ask that you pour your Spirit into our lives so that we keep no record of wrongs. We want to be known as those who are grace givers and who forgive and choose not to remember. So as you have forgiven us our sins, we choose to forgive those. Not in our own strength, but we, by the Holy Spirit. We choose to forgive those who have hurt us, who have offended us. We release them today. Yes, we release them. And may they find you as we have as well. Come, may we be grace givers. May we see the gold in the people rather than the dirt. 
Yeah, and Holy Spirit, come. Yeah, come. May we believe the best about others. May we believe the best. May we always close our ears to the slander and lies and gossip. And may we stand shoulder to shoulder, believe the best, see the image of God in every single person and stand with them. Yeah, Holy Spirit, come. We need you for revival. Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you revive us? Would you send a revival and start with us? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's, let's come and worship before the King of our hearts. Yeah.